If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Today's gospel picks up where last week's ended. Jesus continues to deliver his farewell discourse. But today we hear another interesting statement from Jesus. He tells us that he will ask the Father to send another advocate to be with us, to be with us always. Jesus was the first advocate. Jesus is aware that the loss of his physical presence will be a big blow for his disciples. On the third day, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. He reassures them, I will not leave you orphaned. Of course, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. The loss of his physical presence will be made up to them by the sending of the Holy Spirit who will be with them permanently. And the Holy Spirit comes with gifts. He brings the gifts of wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and awe of the Lord. We also receive the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and chastity. What an advocate and what amazing gifts. I do not need to rely on my own resources. Our gospel today begins and ends with love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And ends with, whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. But what commandments is Jesus referring to? John's gospel does not list any thou shall nots. The Jews had hundreds of laws. Moses brought down the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. But in John's gospel, in chapter 13, Jesus gives us only one commandment. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. Friday night was confirmation here, and of course our bishop was there. He spoke a little about what we're talking about today. He said the Ten Commandments are easy compared to this commandment. If we loved one another, there would be no infractions of Moses' law. We would have no other gods before him, nor take his name in vain. We would keep holy the Sabbath. We would honor our father and our mother. We would not kill or commit adultery. We would not steal or bear false witness or covet. Jesus said, as I have loved you, so you should love also love one another. This is how we'll know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love one another. Love your enemies. Sometimes we forget the Holy Spirit. We pray often to God the Father and God the Son. But how many times do we pray specifically to the Holy Spirit? Remember, he is the advocate sent to us by the Father. We should pray to the Holy Spirit and ask him to help us to use these gifts and to perfect these fruits. What a great gospel we have today. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him. If we read further into John 14, we hear, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. These words appear over a hundred times in Scripture. What pertinent words in today's world. Let us take them to heart. John's 14th and 15th chapters give us a unique perspective of our relationship with God. Jesus tells his disciples and tells us that there is something we have to do. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If we do, Jesus will ask his Father to send us another advocate to always be with us. Notice he doesn't say, 
if you keep my commandments, you will show me that you love me. We can't earn God's love. It is given freely. It is unconditional. What he means is, if you love me, then you will want to keep my commandments. God is love, and love is his first gift containing all the others. If we truly love God, we will want to keep his commandments. In one of my favorite movies, a character who's a leader of a gang is asked about leadership. He asks, is it better to be loved or feared? The answer was, that's a good question. It's nice to be both, but it's difficult. But if I had my choice, I would rather be feared. Fear lasts longer than love. How wrong he is. But this is the way the world thinks. Jesus tells us in John 15, and we use it in the Stations of the Cross at the third station, if the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. God will never choose fear over love, because God is love. Jesus does not want us to fear him. He wants us to love him. God's desire is to be loved rather than feared, to be a father rather than a lord. He warns us that this advocate, this spirit of truth, will not be accepted by the world. The world cannot see him or know him. But we know him. We know him because we are not in this world. We want to be in the world, but really, we want the world to be with us. It's not going to happen. For the world to be with us, it has to love Jesus. Does anybody doubt that the world does not love Jesus? For the world to be with us, it has to keep his commandments. Does anybody doubt that the world does not keep his commandments? Do we love Jesus? Maybe we are not part of this world. Do we keep his commandments? Maybe we are not part of this world. I have no problem with not being part of this world. I don't keep all of the commandments all of the time, but I try. I try and fail and ask forgiveness, and then I try again. No, I am not part of this world. I don't want to be. I want to be part of the next world. I am imperfect but I keep trying. I always end my homily when I read this gospel with the Merton prayer. Thomas Merton captured my struggle in his prayer. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself and the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. <laughs>